This is the Golden Lion, Shiki, one of the most powerful characters in all of One Piece. A living legend that fought on one level with the likes of Rox, Roger, Garp, and Sengoku. And yet Shiki is a character that even some of the most hardcore fans don't even know is a canon part of the story. That he's still alive and well somewhere out here in the world of One Piece. A world where now all of his potential rivals, Kaido, Big Mom, and Whitebeard, have all vanished from the playing field at exactly the same time that he promised to carry out his big plan to take over the world. Is this just a coincidence? Or is there actual proof in the story that the Golden Lion has been secretly pulling the strings from behind the scenes, orchestrating all the major events in One Piece? Turns out there is. Not only of Shiki's fingerprints that he left throughout the story, but as we'll see at the end, also for a friendship between Garp, Roger, Rox, and him in his youth. Let's find out why. The Golden Line Shiki, also known as the Flying Pirate, is a bit of an enigma in One Piece. If you've heard his name before, you probably remember Shiki as the main antagonist of the One Piece movie Strong World that came out in December 2009. That even though is already 13 years old, is still one of the best One Piece movies ever created, I think. The reason for that is simple. While the events of Strong World, just like Stampede, Film Red, or Film Z, are not part of the official One Piece canon, meaning they never officially happened as a part of the story, Shiki's character has been confirmed as canon on multiple occasions by Eiichiro Oda, the author of One Piece. So very much unlike other powerful movie characters like Uta, Admiral Cypher, or former Raja pirate Douglas Bullet, the Golden Lion Shiki is confirmed to be alive somewhere out there in the One Piece world. And while the events in the movie never happened, his past and powers are very real, including his powerful devil fruit ability to make anything and anyone he touches levitate and control them at will. As you've guessed, this will of course be important later on. So what do we actually know about this character? Well, turns out quite a lot actually. On top of a number of official mentions in the regular storyline, Strong World also released with the official chapter zero of One Piece. Piece. That not only describes most of Shiki's past, but also revealed a number of other impactful events that have been incredibly important to the story. You want an example? Alright, the chapter for example reveals that Dragon, Mihawk, Crocodile, and Doflamingo were all present at Roger's execution. Or how Shanks recruited Usopp's father Yasop and started his own pirate crew, later becoming of course a Yonko. Shiki himself used to be part of the legendary and infamous Rocks pirate crew that included the likes of Big Mom, Kaido, and Whitebeard, all of who would later on turn out to become Emperors of the Sea, the most powerful and influential pirates in the world. After Rox was defeated during the God Valley incident and the Rox pirates were disbanded, Shiki became a captain himself, leading the strongest and largest fleet on the planet and becoming a true pillar of the old era. He had a ton of respect for Roger, whom he had a rivalry with similar to Whitebeard. And when Shiki found out that Roger had located one of the ancient weapons. He tried to persuade Roger to become his right-hand man and together take over the world, following the dream of his former captain, Rox. When Roger declined that offer, the Battle of Ed War began. Shiki's fleet had the Roger pirates completely surrounded when a sudden change of weather sank half of Shiki's ships and a piece of wood got stuck in his skull. As a result, the Roger pirates were able to escape and later, when Roger let himself be captured by Garp to kick off the Great Pirate Era to find the next Joy Boy, Shiki, who didn't know that, went to Marine Fort on his own to stop the Marines, only to find out that unlike Ace, Roger was going to be executed in his hometown of Loketown, located in the East Blue. Yeah, you heard that right. Shiki did the entire Marine Fort war on his own until he was ultimately stopped and captured by Garp and Sengoku in a battle that destroyed half the islands. As a result, Shiki was then brought to Impel Down, the Marines' underwater prison, legendary for its cruelty and escape-proof layout. And yet, Shiki managed to escape here after only two years, and to this day, he remains the only person in history to ever escape the prison on his own. How? Well, without betting an eye, he cut off his own legs to get rid of his sea stone cuffs, 
so he could use his ability and escape. He then replaced his legs with his two legendary name blades and went to see his old mate Whitebeard for a little chat, telling him about a new plan of his that would be carried out in 20 years. In fact, despite his quite comical and charismatic personality, all other legends of this era know him for a cunning schemer and dangerously powerful enemy. And so since Shiki's actions in Strong World were not canon, but his plan to show the world hell in 20 years very much is, are there any hints out there that Shiki could actually be active in the One Piece world right now? Yes, there are. And shout out once again to Mr. Bushido, who gave me the idea for this theory on my subreddit. If you want to check it out, link in the description. So remember Shiki's devil fruit, the ability to let anything that he touches levitate with full control over it? Turns out there are a number of instances throughout the story where objects and even people levitate that are unexplained to this day. After the war at Marineford and in preparation for the time skip, we see Apu, a member of the worst generation who would later on become a part of Kaido's crew floating up into the sky. Similarly, we see the ship of Kabon Bitch, another member of the worst generation, being sucked into a giant object levitating over the ocean. Then we have this mysterious shrine floating casually in the air in early Wano. We see a mysterious man sharing a cup of sake with Crocus, whose Japanese attire and long golden hair very much resemble Shiki's. And we see Kurozumi Higurashi, the old hack who helped Kaido and Orochi claim power in Wano and who wielded Bon Clay's devil fruit before him, change her face into that of a younger Shiki. Do any of these things prove that Shiki is abducting promising young pirates, scheming with former Raja pirates and overthrowing governments? Well, maybe. Let's look at the evidence here. Let's start with Apu. Well, there is very little that we can actually go off of here. This could be any sort of ability or an invisible staircase. But so far, Shiki's is the only devil fruit that we know of that would allow such a feat. So in theory, at least, it would check out. Now, the case of Capone Beige is a lot more extreme. He is literally levitating against his will and sucked into this giant object. Again, could this be something else? Absolutely could. But we also know that Shiki's ship is a literal floating island and that thing could certainly be just that. Why would Shiki want Capone Beige and Apu out of all people in the first place? We'll get to that in a second. As for the floating shrine in Wano, well, this could just be a trick of the perspective or simply a drawing error made by Oda, only that it is deliberately drawn a second time in the manga, clearly once again levitating in the air. And as Shiki explains to us, things that he makes levitate will keep levitating until he stops it or is knocked unconscious. So this one would check out as well. Is that enough though to speculate that Shiki will become an active part of the story again, much less the hidden mastermind that has been pulling the strings from behind the scenes and that Oda has actively kept hidden from us all this time for this big reveal? Well, at least I find it interesting that Shiki's face and name have been popping up quite a lot recently again. Shiki's face appearing in Wano, connecting him to the Kurozumi is one thing, but Sengoku revealing that he was part of the Rocks Pirates and named in the same sentence as Kaido, Big Mom and Whitebeard did set off some alarm bells for me. Because suddenly Shiki is not only connected to Roger, Garp and Whitebeard because they were all in the same era and he was a great pirate, but now he was also an active part of the God Valley incident. And yet he was on friendly terms with Whitebeard and Roger even after this. We do know that Big Mom got Kaido's mythical devil fruit on God Valley and we see the mysterious hack who has Shiki's face give Orochi another legendary fruit. Could this one also be from that mythical island? On top of that, Oda has promised the appearance of a lurking legend during the Wano arc. And while if we're being honest, no lurking legend actually appeared in Wano, I mean, I guess you could argue that Oda meant the reveal of Rox Dizabek's name during the arc. However, doesn't Shiki fit that description much, much better. I mean, he is on the same power level as the other Yonko. He is literally one of the legends of the old era, known by everyone for his epic battles and his escape from Impel Down. And I think we've made it more than clear at this point that Shiki has been doing nothing else but lurking for the past 20 years, working on his big plan. But even if Shiki is the lurking legend and still is doing stuff behind the scenes, how do we know he's actually working on something big? And what would a plan like like this even look like? Well, it turns out we might already know just that. If there is one consistent theme that Oda has created around the character of Shiki throughout the years, it's that he's a schemer. We have multiple other legendary 
legendary characters commenting on exactly this love for big plans and maneuvers. Garp mentions that Shiki is not the type of person who could tolerate a peaceful era, but at the same time he would also not start something big without extensive planning and preparation beforehand. When Shiki is on Whitebeard's ship after his grand escape, Whitebeard comments that Shiki is surely planning something big again. And even Rayleigh is shown reacting to the news of Shiki's escape, wondering what he's planning to do next. After he's captured by Garp and Sengoku, he says that he will make the world see that pirates are the true rulers of the sea, and the last panel of chapter zero has him straight out saying that he has a 20 year plan in the making. And Oda really has made it a point recently to show us just how much plotting and manipulation is going on in the One Piece world on multiple levels. For example, Caesar is controlling Punk Hazard, Doflamingo is controlling Caesar, Kaido is controlling Doflamingo, so why couldn't there be another the link in this chain. I mean, we do know that Shiki has had connections to all the big players in the world. The Roger Pirates, including Shanks and Buggy, the other three original Yonko, and through Rocks and God Valley, he must probably have known some of the most important and biggest secrets of One Piece. For example, the existence of Emu. By the way, subscribe if you think that Shiki would make a better final villain than Emu. If Shiki is not only an active part of the current One Piece plot, but also has been cooking up a major plan to take over the world, what exactly is that plan? Well, for that, we need to start connecting all the dots that we've put on the board so far. And the picture that they paint is truly shocking. Let's start in Wano. We have three things connecting him to the country. Shiki's Japanese design, the floating temple, and his face being used by Kurozumi Higurashi. And the last one tells us one thing for sure. Higurashi met and touched Shiki at least once. Oh, that sounds kind of gross now that I think about it. And why would Oda just throw him in as a random face if it didn't mean anything. I mean, anything Oda does always means something. One option is that Higurashi used to be part of the Rocks Pirates, which is a real possibility. But another one is that she was in cahoots with Shiki. And this is where things get interesting. As you will recall, it was Kurozumi Higurashi and her partner who pushed Orochi into claiming the throne and also who invited Kaido into taking over the country. The two of them are the the only source that we have for the Kurozumi hunt that happened after Orochi's ancestor killed the other daimyos, only is that actually true? I mean, take Kanjiro's parents for instance. They were actors that were killed on stage after being recognized by the audience. But let me ask you, would you become an actor and play in front of the entire country if everyone was trying to kill you? Wouldn't you much rather try to stay under the radar or even leave the country as some people from Wano did when they founded Shimotsuke village in the East Blue? So could it not be that it was this group of people, loyal to Rox or Shiki or whoever, who killed Orochi's and Kanjiro's parents to create an easy to control puppet that could then take over Wano for them. But then of course you could ask, what would Shiki get out of it if he installed Kaido and an easy to control puppet ruler in Wano? Well, the one thing that he wanted right from the start, which started the battle of Ed War with Roger. Shiki wanted an ancient weapon. And as we now know, there has been one sitting and waiting right here in Wano. Taking out Kaido, getting his poneglyph, plus the ancient weapon Pluton. You probably already know that the two people who claim to be Kurozumis possessed two devil fruits that we already know. Bartolomeo's Barrier Fruit and Bonclay's Mirror Fruit. But what if those two characters never actually died? What if this pair is Bartolomeo and Bonclay? I mean, I know this really sounds stupid because they are two characters that have been two of Luffy's biggest allies and fans, but have you ever wondered why Bonclay joined Crocodile, for instance? At least when he's around Luffy. But Crocodile was also looking exactly Exactly for an ancient weapon in Alabasta, that was his whole mission there. And Bonclay has been associated with Impel Down as well. Now, you might already hate me for defiling Bonclay's memory, but surely there is nothing shady going on with Bartolomeo. Well, remember that Bartolomeo burned one of Shanks's flags and claimed his island for Luffy? An action that, by the way, basically means Luffy declaring war on Shanks in pirate terms. Something the Yonko has very much noticed, as we now know. I mean, he's not the brightest, but it's still a very strange thing for Bartolomeo to do. And remember Apu and his men running into the sky? Well, the only other ability that could explain that, except Shiki himself, would be Bartolomeo's slash the old Kurozumi dude's barrier power. 
as we have seen it used on Dressrosa. Apu became part of Kaido's crew after this strange event happened, so could Shiki have recruited him as an inside man? Plan to take out Kaido? Plan to take out Shanks? Using Luffy's powers and role as Joy Boy? for himself. What about Big Mom? Well, remember Beige and his levitating adventure? Next time we see Beige after that, he has married into Big Mom's family to the sister of Lola, who was supposed to marry Loki, the prince of the giants. And since Big Mom and the giants aren't exactly on speaking terms because <coughs> of a certain incident, how did Loki get the opportunity to fall in love with Lola in the first place? Again, we have a rival, Big Mom, a former rocks pirate, a road poneglyph, and and Elbaf, an island heavily associated with the last missing ancient weapon Uranus. I made a whole video on that by the way in case you're interested. But now Big Mom has also disappeared from the playing fields. What about Whitebeard? Well, he got infiltrated and manipulated too by Blackbeard. And admittedly, while there isn't anything that proves Shiki's involvement here, both of them are connected through rocks, with Shiki being the only one who openly shared his captain's dream of world domination. And we have of course Adibu, a character who's with the Straw Hats right now, who knows the location of not just one, but two ancient weapons, and who wants to report these findings to some mysterious person as soon as possible. Now, admittedly, the fact that Shiki has already been revealed as the major villain of a non-canon film makes his reappearance more unlikely than if he had just been name-dropped. However, it also gave Oda the chance to implement and introduce him as a character without messing up his entire Entire storyline. I mean, Oda actually came out and said openly that he wanted to write Shiki into the story earlier before the film was ever planned, but felt that it would overwhelm the audience during the Alabasta saga where concepts like poneglyphs were just being introduced for the very first time. And so I think there's a really good chance that Oda wanted us to know who this lurking legend is and what he's capable of, so that his reveal as the evil mastermind at the end of the story hits us a lot harder than if it was just a random random new character that we've never seen before. A character that might already have taken out three of the four original rivals for the One Piece, who works with one of the new Yonko and is trying to start a war between the other two. All of course to finally fulfill his dream to become the ruler of pirates and thus, in his own words, the ruler of the seas. A dream that his rival Roger managed to fulfill 20 years before him. And I actually think that these two characters, Roger and Shiki, used to be friends friends, as weird as it sounds, something that Shiki hints at in this panel right here. Shiki wears Japanese clothes, but Wano isn't the only country in One Piece that has a Japanese theme going on. In the East Blue that Shiki despises for some reason, there is an island called the Oikot Kingdom, which is literally Tokyo spelled backwards. And guess what? It's where Belmere found Nami and Nojiko after it was destroyed by pirates. Belmere, who we saw in Chapter Zero saying that she she'd come for Shiki if he ever came back to the East Blue again. So maybe Shiki came for Nami's hometown, for his hometown, which Oda hinted at with Nami's and Shiki's relationship in Strong Worlds. And if Shiki is also from the East Blue, well, he would probably have become friends with the group of upcoming rookies there, Garb, Roger, and Rox. But if you want to hear the full story for that, well, you can click right here to watch that video next.